everyone, congrats. You finish an entire math book, chapters one through 12. Um, that doesn't happen often. So um, nice job on getting through all of this. Uh, we are now going to start in on our 18-day review to get you ready for the national exam. Um, this video's main focus is going to do just an introduction and to focus on uh, what day one and day two is like. Uh, let's actually go into this folder. Um, in the folder, you're going to see a few things. You um, will have a post for a question board. If you have any questions, feel free to use that or shoot me an email or come see me in class. Um, general resources, you're going to find a few helpful things. I have my note packet that I uh, have available. I recommend instead of just referencing this is to come and get the hard copy. It's over 100 pages long. Um, if you're at home, let me know and I'll put one out for you on the distance table. Here's also the fresh formula sheet if you need that. Uh, let's actually look at the, the packet and I want to talk about again what this packet's going to cover, uh, the formula sheet and the first day one and day two of your diagnostic focus. So if we go into here, again, just a quick reminder on the days if your paper versus digital for when your testing is, make note of that and put it in your calendar. Um, I already talked about the question board and general resources. Uh, what I want to focus on is this right here are the topics. Uh, we are going to cover four topics in here, which is basically a review of the entire book. Uh, topic one was explanatory data, which was chapters one through three, and I've spent three days on that. Uh, topic two was designing a study. That was just chapter four, and I spent three days on that. Do know this chapter is about 15% of your overall grade in your test. Uh, Topic three was probability, that's chapters five, six, and seven. We do spend four days on this one. Um, students in the past have said they like more probability review because they feel a little less comfortable with it. So that's what I've done here. And then topic four covers uh, five chapters, right, eight through 12. I only spend three days on that because it's more fresh in your mind doing the st statistical inferences and studies. Um, how I'm going to be scoring you for this is, is how this is how it works. Basically, every day, once we hit the standard review, you're going to have a multiple choice puzzle piece and one free response to try. Um, you're going to do the puzzle piece. Let's say you get 50 out of 100 on there. Don't worry. It's grading for this review is all on participation. It has nothing to do with your actual accuracy or performance. Um, if you get 50% on it, I'm still going to give you 100% participation. The free responses, I have you do them and I have you check your solutions and do some uploads. You're going to do some self-grading. And again, it's going to be based on just that you meet a certain deadline. So really, in theory, this 18-day review, everyone should get 100% if you meet my deadlines. I will have the posted due dates. If you can't make those, you have a little bit of wiggle room, again, to make the deadline. My goal here is just to keep you focused and on task to give you a nice, good, enriched review. Okay, in the packet, uh, you're going to see a 10-page formula sheet. Um, in the paper-based version, they give you this formula sheet. I think you have to, it's perforated and you have to rip it out online. I'm sure it's supplied. I'm not exactly sure. Uh, let me just highlight a few things. Really, there's only two pages of formulas. The rest are tables that we probably aren't going to use much. Um, these first two formulas here is for chapter one. So this is a formula for the mean of statistical data. This is a standard deviation. Um, these next four are related to chapter three. If you have to write the linear regression or a predicted model and they don't give you like computer output, but they give you means and standard deviations and the correlations, you use this formula here. And what you do is you piece this the form equation together using these three formulas. This one here is going to give you the A if you solve for it, which is the y-intercept. This is going to give you the B, which is the slope. Now, remember, R is correlation coefficient. These are standard deviations. This formula here for R is your correlation coefficient. Then they go into the next section is going to be related to chapter five. Uh, probability. This is the formula for an or probability. It's the probability of A or B or the union of it. What you do is you add the two events together. And then remember, you subtract out the probability of A and B, which is the intersection, if there's any overlap. So recall that one. This is conditional probability. The probability of A given B is this formula here. Um, remember, A given B, it's like a subset of the information. It's not using all of the data in a table, for example. This next grouping is uh, going to give you the mean and standard deviation of a discrete random variable. So if they said, what is the expected value of a distribution? This is how you did it. What is the standard deviation of a probability distribution? Uh, we then had binomial distributions in chapter seven. This is its mean and standard deviation. 
a geometric di distribution in cha chapter seven, the mean and standard deviation. We then jump to our inference studies between chapters eight through 12. This is the, the test statistic, right? We take our statistic minus our parameter over the standard error. Um, it's kind of like take your data minus the mean over standard deviation concept. Our confidence interval, remember, is your statistic plus or minus your critical value. That could be a Z critical value or a T critical value um, times your standard error of the statistic. Chi squared, you guys just did that in chapter 11. There it is again. This grouping here is going to be what is the mean and standard deviation and then the standard error um, for one population. So this is if we have categorical data and you have one population. This is if we have the difference of two categorical data. Uh, remember, lowercase p means proportion. So that deals again with the categorical data and our standard deviations and standard errors here. So these you saw kind of on that handout sheet that I gave you about all those tests, this is what you're gonna have supplied to you because I, they're not gonna get that colorful card cardstock paper that I gave you, but this is it here. The next one is for the means. So remember the means is like the quantitative data, something that a mean can be computed. Uh, here's our mean and standard deviation for one mean. Um, and then this is for the difference of means is what you're gonna see there. Here's our mean and standard deviation for a slope. So this is related to chapter 12, that could be handy. And that is gonna be really it for your formulas. The next thing that they're gonna supply in the next eight pages are all the tables for probabilities. Personally, I would just use my calculator. Um, I would not use the standard normal table here for normal probabilities. I would do normal CDF on my calculator if they want a probability. If they want the Z-score and I have to reverse it, I do inverse norm. Feel free if you want to. Uh, these first two pages are going to give you the negative Z-scores. And then you're going to come up to uh, the second set of tables here are going to give you the positive Z-scores. So this here, again, feel free if you're comfortable with the tables, use them. I don't. I prefer the calculator. Uh, the next table they are going to supply to you is going to be the T distribution. Remember, if you use this table, be careful. It talks about it's the probability of the tail that you calculate. Again, instead of this table, I use TCDF or I will just run a test. Maybe I do a, you know, a sample means test, uh, a T test or a T interval, something of that nature. And then the last table is the chi-square. Um, there is a chi-square CDF. Um, I think we're more used to using the um, the test, the chi-square test, or making an interval related to chi-square. If you like the table, again, be careful. This is the probability in the tail. That then leads us into our diagnostic. Um, the diagnostic uh, portion is three of the 18 days. And in this video, I just want to talk about day one and day two. So the diagnostic exam is worth participation. You could butcher it and not do well and still get 100 points. So again, keep that in mind. But here's what you need to do put all of your materials away. Do not have your book out, don't have your notes out, just have your formula sheet and your calculator. Pretend this is the real test. Um, see how well you do. What you're gonna be doing is you're actually, I'm gonna hop out of here for a second. You're gonna be taking the actual 2014 exam. So if you go back to the actual, this display here, go into the diagnostic exam folder. And the first thing you're gonna find is um, the multiple choice questions. This is 40 multiple choice. So on day one, lock down 90 minutes where you are uninterrupted and see how well you do. That is your first day diagnostic. Just do that and let it go. Day two, the assignment is now gonna be doing the free response. So again, put all your materials away. You have 90 minutes to do six free responses on the real paper-based test. Um, if you're taking this digitally, do the same assessment. So yours is gonna have a, a similar vibe. Um, you're not gonna be uh, handwriting things, you're gonna be typing, but try it the same way. Now, you're gonna be able to find the free responses are actually gonna be in your note packet. The multiple choice are only here online. When it comes time for the free response, you're gonna come here. I would do them on this paper first and then um, call it that, done that way. Now, what you need to know about the free responses, there are six free responses. The first five are all weighted the same. The number six one is actually, has a double weight to it. 
and it's something they assume you spend more time on. So typically they'll say spend 15 minutes on questions one through five on, on each question, and then give yourself about 25 minutes to half an hour for question six. Question six is an investigative problem. So what you're gonna find when you do question six is you're gonna feel like you're, you kind of get it and it makes sense. But the last question or the, or the last two questions are something you've probably never seen before. And what they want to do is test your ability to see how you would handle it. Um, if you look at it and you'll be like, we've never learned this. That's correct. You haven't. So they want to know how you're going to handle it. So just do your best on, on that portion of it. Okay. And that is actually going to be the end of that diagnostic portion. So that's day two, day two. Now, once you start day three, you have another video to watch. And I'm going to walk through how I want you to analyze your results. Um, ultimately, I'm going to have you kind of look and see how you did on the multiple choice, the free response, come up with a study plan. Um, and Because this is what it might be. What if topic, four, uh, topic two on designing a study, which is chapter four, you nailed it, you get it, you're comfortable. Then when it comes down to us actually starting our review on topic two, you probably aren't going to take it as in depth and as, you know, as in focus because you feel comfortable with it already. So I'm trying to help you start thinking about how should you be studying? Where should you put more focus? Did your probability, did it just get you chapters five through six or through seven? Because if it did, then your, your study plan is going to be based around that. Um, so that is really what day one and day two are about. Um, good luck with this review. Absolutely reach out to me with whatever I can help if you want extra resources. Um, you guys got this. Just stay focused. Um, AP stats, let's get yourself some national credit so you can get some college credit and, and just nail this thing. So uh, good luck and uh, let's make it happen.